and welcome to Magrathia Builder of Worlds. This is a silver bayonet build. Ah, get me? Yeah, I know. Branching out. Something different. Maybe. Um, for those of you who don't know, I have a Patreon page. You can support this channel by signing up to my Patreon page. Here it is. Patreon.com slash Magrathia Builder World. Three times a year, I run a competition on my Patreon page for my patrons, uh, inviting them to make suggestions uh, for something that I could build, a model that I could build uh, on the channel here. And uh, the idea is the person who comes up with the, the idea, the model, the design that I fancy making the most, the one I think is going to look really cool from a model point of view or provide a great challenge or something that re just really piques my interest. Um, I make that model, we design that model together, I make that model, and then that patron gets to keep it. That's it. I get it sent to them. They get a custom designed bespoke piece of scenery um, for nothing, for entering the competition, for being a patron for of uh, Magrathia Builder Worlds, which is really cool. I never actually thought anybody would be up for doing uh, Patreon. I was, I'm always surprised, but it's great. There's a whole bunch of people who do. Uh, we have great conversations, and there are... Um, these competitions to enter. You do also get exclusive access to some of my videos and various other bits and pieces. Um, and uh, um, actually, I might even sell some of my scenery through my Patreon page. Who knows? But uh, last December, December 2021, was the last competition I had. I've got to get on with this bill because it's now March. The next competition is in April. Um, the winner of the competition was a chap called Kelly who I believe is from the uh, good old US of A and he was particularly interested in the new uh, Joseph A. McCullough game The Silver Bayonet which for those of you who don't know it's a war game of Napoleonic gothic horror you know uh, Pride and Prejudice with Zombies the tabletop game which is very cool. I bought this some time ago. Well, some time ago. I, I did buy this game. I'd seen it uh, before uh, knocking around. I thought that was something that might be of some interest to me. I always like those kind of games. And I like Joe McCullough's games. Um, and I'd love to think that I've got time to build a whole bunch of stuff for it and play it. But I can't see that happening one way or another. Who knows? You never know. I might enjoy this build so much I might get into it. Um, Silver Bayon Bayonet is designed for 28mm figures on the whole. There is a range of figures, I believe they're from North Star uh, miniatures, but of course it's a, a miniatures agnostic game, which means you can use figures from any ranges you like, which means there's tons and tons of scope for players to create and do their own thing with it. I don't have any 28mm Nap Napoleonic figures. I only have 40mm Napoleonic figures because I'm odd like that. So this is going to look a bit weird at the end when I kind of like put figures with it. We'll see how we go. All right, so let's get on with the build then. Um, the design, uh, Kelly and I talked about uh, a northern European farmhouse, um, a building that's kind of um, a bit historical, a little bit fantasy. Uh, uh, looks a bit like this, actually. This is the plan. Uh, these were the original ideas we came up with after we'd had a couple of discussions. Actually, the very first conversation was about having a building built into a hillside, but that won't fit on a 12 by 12 uh, board particularly well, so we decided to go for something a little bit more traditional. Um, but the idea here is the fact that it's partially ruined, which means uh, you've got easy access into the building, which for me is great because um, unlike my B&B &B models that all have to come apart in separate pieces, this model I'm aiming to make all as one piece with enough room to get your hand inside, access to a couple of different floors and that kind of thing. Um, broken down uh, walls at the back, a, a cottage garden, which didn't really feature on that picture, uh, and something then that would be usable for the silver bayonet, but really uh, could be used as a farmhouse uh, in um, English Civil War games, Franco-Prussian War games, World War One or World War Two games, all kinds of things. So we're trying to go for a fairly um, flexible, ubiquitous piece of scenery here, but it's specifically, in this case, being made for the silver bayonet. I'm going to make this model uh, in the way I make uh, a lot of other models. It's going to go on a hardboard base. I've got to find out what you guys in America call this stuff that we call hardboard. 
We'll have a closer look at that in a minute. Um, and uh, I'm going to make it with XPS foam, foam board, balsa wood, and cardboard. That's certainly the plan. So I think the very best thing for me to do will be to find a hardboard base, cut out a 12 inch square, roughly 12 inch by 12. The actual scenery is going to be 12 by 12. There'll be a little bit of overlap. I'm not going to bother showing you that bit. That will be dull. And then we'll get on with making the actual building. So, um, what do we need to do? Oh yeah, let's read a little bit more about Napoleonic vampires, first of all. Or, uh, nasty dead things in gibbets. Extreme close. Alright, little thing first of all before we go any further. Um, this book then, The Silver Bayonet. I've got to confess, I haven't read the rules. I can't tell you right now whether the rules are any good. Um, if you have played Silver Bayonet, uh, Kelly or anybody else has played Silver Bayonet, if you like this rule system, if you think they're great rules, uh, leave a comment down below. Tell me why you like them down below. That would be really, really great because uh, there's not enough time in my life to read all these things. Give me a hint and tell me why I should buy, actually bother playing this game. I bought it because I like the concept. And then I was really pleased with the actual gorgeous look of the book when I took it out. It's published by Osprey Games. Um, they publish uh, a lot of games that I like. Um, they were the first publishers of Burrows and Badgers, although I hope in the future at some point Michael Lovejoy will get to uh, publish his own stuff because he'll have way more control. But this is a really gorgeous looking book. It looks old. It's got this great stain on the front. It's got marbled end pages inside which is really got that lovely lovely old feel to it um the artwork i just actually just open it up um it's really nice i don't know the artist is let's have a quick look uh, art by all right it's all um and author illustrations brain bug design 2d conceptual art illustration visual development studio embedded with the entertainment industries based in nottingham of course they are. So much wargaming stuff comes from Nottingham. Um, but, yeah, the illustrations are, are, are beautiful. Um, the stains and, and, and thumbed pages look fantastic. Uh, all sorts of really cool bits. It's a, a, a lovely, lovely looking book. Check it out. There you are. Um, so... I'm really pleased to have this on my shelf of War Games rules, even though I haven't had a chance to pick it up and even consider playing it yet. Uh, very, very cool, though. So, well done, Mr. McCulloch, uh, and well done, um, Osprey Publishing, and Brainbug, the artists, and that the kind of thing, because this is cool. Um, I, I, I really need to uh, get into this kind of thing. Maybe when I've got my B&B &B bug out of the way. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, Silver Bayonet might be the next thing. We'll have to see. Right, American viewers then. Um, and anybody anywhere else. This is the stuff that I call hardboard. This is hardboard in the UK, right? Um, on the whole, hardboard is, is pretty thin. Um, it's generally, let's have a look, that's about three or four mils thick. You can't see that there. Um, which, inch-wise, is uh, about three sixteenths of an inch thick. Um it's the kind of stuff, it's obviously a wood kind of like pulpy kind of cardboardy kind of product. It's the kind of stuff that you get in the back of um, picture frames a lot of the time. And also in a lot of cheap furniture, um, they get it gets the bottom of drawers or uh, in flat back furniture, flat pack furniture sometimes. Um, it's the stuff that the uh, backs of wardrobes and the backs of chests of drawers get made out of as well. Um, so, just out of interest, if you're across the pond, just so I can get the terminology right, what do you call what the UK calls hardboard? Because I'm pretty sure you call something else hardboard, which we call something else. So, what do you call our stuff that we call hardboard? And what is it that you call hardboard? Uh, comments down below. If you would be so kind, thank you ever so much. Right, um, getting on with this build then. Here is my piece of hardboard cut out, roughly 13 inches square. What I'm now going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this kind of like squarish edge, cut off, go around the corners, and just make it a little bit more kind of like this regular. Um, and then we're going to get on with the actual design side of things. 
cool. Kelly, 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 I'm making your model, mate. I'm making your model. Kelly, it's coming, it's coming. I promise. I've got to get it done quick as well because it's gone like second week of March. I want it done before the end of the month so I can make the B&B Lighthouse. And so when I do the next competition, uh, this one is done and out of the way. Right. Um, what do we need? Stanley knife. Cut. Now, uh, I'm going to be using rough side up. I think smooth side down for the moment. And what's nice with this stuff is you can literally just cut away bits in it. There we are, look. Stringy bit. Bin that. Turn it okay, so the first thing I've done, I've cut out my hardball base. I've shampered off the edges. Uh, the hardball base is actually just about 13 inches across each way, so I can get a 12 foot inch square uh, piece of terrain on it. And as you can see, I've drawn roughly on the shape of uh, the floor plan. So this is the main farmhouse, then there's a wall around the outside and an outbuilding and this will be kind of overgrown or wrecked cottage garden. So uh, the first thing I think I'm actually going to do is put a cardboard um, large stone floor into the kitchen. Um, there's going to be a chimney pretty much central in here as well. Um, Enough room either side for figures to get down, just about. I might be a bit smaller than that. Uh, and that will go right up through the centre of the model. Um, so I'm going to put in the stone floor first of all, then I can put on the walls on top of it. Almost the whole of this ground floor is going to be done in XPS foam. 10mm XPS foam. It's going to be quick. I'm going to draw on small stone walls. We're going to cut windows out. Uh, and as per the plan, we're going to uh, wreck in, have a wrecked area kind of here and a wrecked area kind of here. So lots of wall collapse. We'll have to have some rubble, but not too much because that will get in the way of the figures and then open ends at each end. So that's the kind of the plan. So the first thing we need to do then is find 10 millimeter XPS foam. Here are some off cutty bits I've already got, which are kind of handy. That is already two inches high, which is going to be about, I'd imagine, the right size for the lower, for the ground floor. So that's going to go in here. And you can see this bit is already even textured, although it's not textured on the other side. So I'm going to um, make the whole uh, ground floor section with, I think, two inch tall, 10 millimeter wall sections. So I need to cut out a whole load of uh, XPS foam. What I'm going to do first of all actually is, is texture it, it's easier to do that in a big piece. Then I'm going to cut it out and start sticking it on and work out where the wrecks and ruins are going to be. Because pretty much everything, if you look in the original picture, <sighs> there are holes and gaps in all the bits of walls, so nothing is secure, an enemy can get in from all sides. Uh, yeah, that's the plan. Get the XPS foam. Do it now. Do it and then do the texturing thing. So apologies for the uh, background noise, it's a 3D printer running. Um, printing some stuff for uh, uh, cosplay my wife is working on for somebody. Right, anyway, uh, I hope, so I hope you can hear this over this. If not, you'll have to live without it. Um, so I've now um, cut several lengths of uh, XPS foam and done the tinfoil thing on it to give it a bit of texture. I've decided that most of this building um, it's stonework is going to be covered with plaster, with lime plaster, so we don't have to do loads and loads of brickwork. But what I'm now doing is working out um, all the lower walls, so that the walls, um, the lower walls on the house, first floor or ground floor, if you're in the UK, first floor if you're, you're not, and also the walls around the backyard. Um, so I'm I'm working out placing these on. Um, so this is the uh, one back end of the farmhouse. I've drawn in big brickwork which is going to be visible, the rest is going to be plaster. And this is a bit here uh, I'm going to cut out which will be wrecked and then there will be a bunch of pile of bricks 
on the floor on either side. And then I'm going to cut out this wrecked part of the wall here. So we end up having a, a, a break in the wall. Characters can pass out in and out easily. Of. And I think I'm going to do that for all the ground floor bits of the building first of all. Um, before I start work on the first floor. Um, I had originally thought I'd do the kind of the gable ends. Uh, this ground floor, first floor, and then roof all in one go. But I think actually I'm going to do them separately. Um, it's easier to work with the star in that way. So that's what we're doing. I'm going to cut out these bits here. I'm going to draw it all first. Uh, cut bits of length, but draw it all first before I worry about going to town and cutting the holes and the wreckage. Um, and we'll see where we are with that in a minute. Um, so that's one wall done. Now I'm going to cut two short sections to do these two end bits here that are going to be roughly the same um, see where we are see you in a moment oh, it's all the bits drawn on window wrecked bit yeah you know I'm now going to, have to cut these out cut these out I'll be able to start assembling I'll be able to get the ground floor all stuck on the next job will be to stick in a bunch of flagstone in the uh, ground floor of the house and then I'm going to start to use piles of tiny little bricks that I've cut out um, I'm not going to waste any of the um, wreckage on this model it's all going to be cut up into bricks to be turned into rubble to be placed on the model right let's get cutting out the small bits first part of the wall stuck on them this is the farmhouse, uh, this is the farm yard or the backyard, cottage garden, wrecked walls, uh, look pretty good, we're going to have a shed over here with the roof, chimney's got to go in the middle, um, I started just to play around with uh, rubble and wrecked stuff here, I've got loads of spare, uh, XPS is going to get cut up and made into bricks, they're going to fall into all these places. The next job actually before I do that though is to use... Um, a cereal box which are going to cut up and make flagstones out for the floor here and for some paths out in the um, the uh, farmyard in the backyard the cottage garden whatever you want to call it because then I could put rubble and, and detritus on top of that then I'm going to start to add the wooden beams that would have been the make holding up the floor add some bolts of flooring what's left of it and um, then we're going to look to add the first floor made out of styrene. But, uh, so first job, flagstones, second job, floor for the first floor. Go. Right, so I've got my flagstones then uh, cut out and stuck in. I've just stuck the thin card in with the Yoohoo all-purpose adhesive. I've now cut a number of uh, balsa uh, floor beams, joists, that are going to go... Cross from wall to wall like that. I'm going to sink them into the walls. I only need to do two or three because there's, there's uh, no more floor left. Uh, all of this is missing. I'm then going to want to cut these in, cut uh, uh, floor planks, floor boards to go on top of those that will be rough edged and wrecked. And then I can get on with the first floor. Oh, it's starting to come together now. Um, I'd got a bit despondent with this because I hadn't been able to get on with it recently. But now um, the model is actually starting to take shape, which is cool. So I'm going to take a scalpel. I'm going to cut very lightly into the edge of the XPS foam. Enough to sink my joists into it. And these very light cuts, small amount. I'm going to stick them in with Gorilla Wood Glue. And uh, that way, we'll have a good solid build. Actually, apart from anything else, what it will help hope, start to do is actually provide the model with a little bit more rigidity. Um, this is going to be quite a fragile structure, otherwise. All these freestanding. XPS foam walls, not great. So with some balsa hold keeping them all, all apart from each other. That should be better. So let's just cut. 
Put it like that. I'm going to trim down the joists a little bit so they're not quite so square pretty. Uh, but that's how they're going to go in. Okay, so uh, floor joists in place. Now need some wrecked floorboards on this place and this place. And then we're going to go up a story and do the first floor. Uh, I'm also in a position to start putting junk uh, debris on the ground. Oh, and I also need to make the chimney, don't I? Stick it in the middle, go right up through the building. Um, but floorboards first. Uh, balsa, that's that, about one and a half millimetre thick balsa. I'm going to cut this into individual planks, trim them, and then stick them on. Um, see how we go with that, which look quite nice. Uh, as opposed to doing one whole bit, we just scribed in stuff like I often do. This is going to get the full works, individual planking, um, because I can then wreck bits and trim bits down, have gaps in the floor. A more interesting looking floor mainly because I'm not having to do loads and loads and loads of it so from that point of view it's fine it's worth spending the time on it's only a wrecked floor so doing all of this by eye I reckon those planks are 8 to 10 millimeters wide so to speak um, and we're taking our scalpel and I'm just trimming the edges Thus, the interesting thing about working box wood is, although it's all hardwood, it always varies in softness between each bit. So this is one piece of wood I'm actually working with is particularly tough. So, trim these. They're going to need to be different um, lengths. I don't want it to all be univer you know, uniform. And I'm also going to draw into it and wreck bits of wood and cut out and that kind of thing. Break down the ends. I'm actually going to... I think the best thing to do in many ways is to snap and tear, if I can. Because that actually gives me a proper rough finish to the plank. Those will stick on. That's going to look all right. So, let's go with the rest of that and see what we get to. This is quite nice. Well, cut it actually. The blood scalpel wasn't very sharp, but you can see it's torn. This which gives me uneven planking here, so I'm going to use that to my advantage. All right, so here we have a wrecked floor. Some pretty cool bits of uh, wrecked beam there. I'm not going to put all of it in. I'm assuming that the... Uh, uh, other bits of wrecked floor and beam and what have you mostly will have been picked up by uh, people who want to burn it and use it in their camp and that kind of thing so most of the models will be fairly clear but I am going to now start to put piles of rubble I'm literally going to do that with uh, glue and tons and tons of little cut up polystyrene bricks uh, which will then get covered in sand and that kind of stuff. And I've, I've got broken bits of wood that I'm also going to chuck in the pile and that kind of thing too. So we'll see how we go. Then I'm going to think about the chimney. Uh, and then I'm going to think about the first floor. Oh, and I'll just get on with the backyard as well. Because I'll just put a shed in here and stuff. But um, rubble first, I think. Let's do it. Right, so my first piles of rubble were in. Like this, look. There we go. What I'm now going to do to kind of secure them is I'm going to put some sand on top of it. Sand and gravel. In fact, what I'm going to do first of all is we're going to take some of the little white stones of gravel I'm using at the moment for basing. I'm going to drop that into some some of the gaps. This is just gravel from a, a aquarium shop. That will give a different kind of size. Uh, gravel will go on there. Let's pour it on. Doesn't matter if it falls in my box of sand underneath, that's fine. Because I'll just add to the kind of grab what goes in there. Then I'm going to pick out the sand and pour that on as well. Uh, to give several different thicknesses of stuff. And then that's going to hopefully 
out all the glue go off make the glue be like concrete I am going to from a painting point of view go over all of this with um, Mod Podge anyway to seal it but uh, okay so I put sand on this bit here as well the very fine sand it will fall in all the bits that haven't got anything else glued to it help the whole thing go a bit like concrete and um, sand in here as well don't even know if that's showing up on camera because I've not been aware of where my hand is there we are And what I'm really going to need to do with that is leave that to dry overnight before I put on another part although I can put on the other thing like a smashed up bits of wood and stuff so we're starting to get piles of rubble around our wreck walls I'm going to do that all round I'm going to have to cut up some more little, brick, little rocks and bricks actually so uh, let's see how we go I don't, I don't need to show you the entire process for this when you come back, I will have piles of rubble everywhere. Raw. Right, here we are then with, with uh, dry rubble. Um, uh, I guess it goes a bit of wood, never mind. Uh, dry rubble, and um, what I need to do uh, at some point is seal this now. Because uh, probably in the air, the rubble is still quite squishy because it's past Um Other jobs to do on the ground floor then include... Um, Chatting with Kelly, make who I'm making this for. We he wanted an overgrown kind of like cottage garden, so I'm going to cut some uh, XPS foam mounds, raised earth beds, which can then have plants growing out and growing wild across here. I've got to put the shed in here, and we've got to do the chimney on the ground floor, and then sand it and seal. Well, seal everything, but certainly seal the the. Uh, um, the rubble piles, because uh, at the minute they're they're quite squishy, but they look they look pretty good. I'm quite pleased with that. I don't need much more rubble than that on there to sell the fact that it's fallen down and knackered, because I want plenty of space to be able to move figures around and, and keep them relatively simple. The next big thing then is to make the other walls. Um, we need a gable end here, so first floor and a gable end here. Um, first floor walls and a bit of roof, and then at this end, of course. Gable end, first floor walls as well. This is exactly the same process as uh, the uh, ground floor walls. So I'm not going to show you that. They're just going to appear made, I think. Um, we did want half timber on the um, uh, first floor walls. So that's fine. So we'll do that with balsa wood. So what I really need to do now is cut some more XPS foam, texture it, cut it out, get the gable ends on and get it done. And do this chimney. Chimney needs to be, I think I'm going to do it with 25 millimeter thick uh, XPS foam. Probably two bits back together, so it's it's like two inches square fat. I might even cut it out two by two, and then I can have a great big solid chimney going all the way up through the model, um, making it the first floor. Ground floor is two inches tall, second floor will be two inches tall, roof will be probably another two to three so i can need about an eight inch tall chimney stack i think in fact i might do that bit first let's do that eight inch tall chimney stack go okay so here is uh, the first part of the chimney i'm making this out of one inch thick xps foam i've cut two four inch by two inch bits they're going to put back together to make a two inch kind of like square i textured it with the tin foil going to draw brickwork in. I'm going to cut out five places for the ground floor and for the first floor. Um, a big European farmhouse like this would often have a central hearth and fireplace. It might have originally started off in the structure uh, at one end and then they added a second end to the, um, the house on the other side. It makes a lot of sense to keep your fireplace in the middle of the house keep all the warmth inside your house. So this is going to be the first the ground floor on the first floor fireplace and chimney and then I've cut a one inch square roughly piece of 25 mil uh, XPS foam which again I'm going to texture and brickwork and that will be the chimney going up through the rest of the building this is going to be one of the only bits solid structure of the whole building that's still kind of like 
standing and all right and in one piece kind of thing. Um, so that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to draw on the stones, work out where the fireplaces go, cut them out. Um, I'm going to cut all the way through, but I cut into them so it'll be obvious that there were like four fireplaces in this building before it was kind of like wrecked. Um, so there we go. So yeah, back to tin foil on the uh, second part of the chimney. This is the actual chimney that goes up through the attic and out of the roof. Texturing is quite cool. I like doing this. It doesn't matter <laughs> actually apart from anything else uh, that the uh, piece of polystyrene I cut isn't entirely square because by the time I've taken all the corners off and been able to wear it down a bit by rubbing into the foam with the foil I can make improve the shape anyway make it square but you know it doesn't have to be completely square it's a chimney rest that's been hundreds hundreds of years old and made out of lots of rough hewn stone so from that point of view it's not gonna be perfectly square up close but it ain't bad i'll cut out cut into with the scalpel in the top here down into the chimney as well so there's a actual kind of cavity not all the way through obviously but enough to Make it interesting from a paint point of view. Right, so oh, one last side. A bit more texture on there. Then we're going to get the biro out. Draw on the stonework because, of course, the ground floor of this house hasn't got much stonework because I'm going with the rendered outside uh, with just some cornerstone showing. So this is a nice opportunity to show drawn, scribed stonework uh, on this model as well. And then, of course, the second floor and the, and the, the roof is going to have, have um, uh, plastering and uh, half timber. So another technique showing on this model as well. Uh, so let's keep going. I'll show you the chimney when it's done. Well, this is a bit of trimmed off XPS foam um, from my kind of like chopping up and making chimneys. It's different thicknesses. It's a bit crap. It's would almost certainly be going in a bin. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use this, carve it down a little bit and turn that into some raised beds that are going to go here and here, which will have well, some kind of crop plants growing out of them that are grown wild and growing all over the garden kind of thing. Brambles, blackberry bushes, raspberry bushes, that kind of thing. So I'm going to cut this into two strips and then I'm going to chamfer it down, stick that on because then that can be sanded over. Nothing else, it will give me um, four or five millimeters of uh, XPS foam that I can then stick plants into with the little spiky bits out of the bottom. So, waste not, what not, that's what I say. I might use some other bits of this trimmed off stuff to give me some different kind of like uh, surface texture in the back garden as well, just so it's not all completely flat. Let's have a look, see how that works out. You never know, it might work. Right, so I've textured some more XPS foam and I've cut out the gable end uh, of the farmhouse. This is the first floor and the attic. Um, I might put another window in here, but what I've now done is I've torn out some holes and I'm now going to start applying uh, balsa wood to do the half timber framing. Uh, this is balsa, it looks like it could be a millimetre, might be a millimetre and a half thick. I'd have to check. I'll put frames on there and then we're going to start sticking this to the main model. Cut out two bits here, cut out a tiny little slice down there, can we see that? That's going to sit over the side of the floorboards that's already on the model. Just going on this wall here like that. And um, this should be a pretty quick process, I hope, to crack on and get the actual rest of the main structure of this house done. Because, fortunately, when you're making ruin, there's just not as much model to make, which is quite neat. So, timber, timber, timber. Might not be quite as a druid with, but we can still have some kind of like corner cross bracing. See where we are. The original drawing for this end doesn't have any windows in this wall, so from that point of view, we do have got one in the attic, though, so that's there, right? So, crack on. Uh, so, this is the second gable end I'm sticking bolster to. Stick it, I'm going to trim it up. Um, got a bit of damage to put in here after I put in the woodwork. This one isn't going to have a window in the top end here. Um, this is what the gable end on this end looks like. 
half timber there. Uh, I'm going to put timber across here to cover up these joins. Um, and on the inside, it looks pretty neat. Um, it will, of course, have um, root floor going across here to form the attic. Got to do that yet with more floor beams. And then we've got to do the roof too in here. Over here and over kind of here. Um, so that's, that's kind of coming on. We're doing quite nice. So this gable end is going to go on here like this. Two more bits of wall. And then, uh, yeah, first uh, attic floors and roof is next. Right, I'm making good progress now. I've got some of the timber on. Um, I've still got to do timber, half timber down the sides here. And it's going to look a bit rickety. I've got to put beams in on the corners and that kind of thing. And I'm currently working on floor beams. Um, then I'm going to sink into uh, the wall, like I have done over here. This one is is uh, wrecked, uh, it's, but it's sunk into the wall, uh, so it can take a bit of flooring on in the attic. And then I'm going to use um, more beam. What's this? This is about five mil by about ten, eight. That I'm going to put into the roof to support the chimney um, and make the whole building that much more. Uh, structurally sound, considering it's a ruin. I, I want to make sure that it's a, a robust model, even though it's not. It's completely broken up and shattered. So that's what we're doing right now. We're not that far away from finishing. Um, when that is done, the only other structural bits I've got to do is um, add the shed into the back garden and uh, put what's left of the roof on. I need to put some wooden window frames into the windows as well, I think. Um, so, making good progress. Hell, we might even get all of this into one video. That'll be the first. Stop! That's it. Big round, fat hobby Gandalf says, Stop! That's your lot this time. You are not getting any more. I know, I know. A moment ago, I said that this build was all going to be featured in one video. What can I say? I'm really sorry. This particular video is nearly 40 minutes long <clears throat> and it hasn't even got through the structural bit. We've still got to add the uh, first floor in, what's left of it, the roof, what's left of it, the shed out in the back garden, what's left of it. We've got to sand it and seal the whole thing, got to prime it, paint it, make the overgrown back garden. There's still a lot to do on this model. Uh, and if I put all of that together, it will take ages. And I know some people have said they like big long videos, but actually I'd rather put out two 40 minute videos than one hour and 20 video because some people just can't stick, be bothered to stick around for the whole thing. So there will be another video coming very soon. Uh, in fact, um, sooner than you think. Now, recently I've had difficulty getting a lot of uh, content out because hey, real life gets in the way. But actually I'm a lot further along than you think you are where we get to the end of this video. The video, the model is actually further along. The filming is further along. Actually, the model has got this far, look. Black, primed, ready to paint. That's gonna happen very soon. So my plan is to put this video out before the Easter holiday, uh, the Easter weekend, and probably the second video out after the Easter weekend. Uh, we'll have to watch for that. So two part videos, yes, back to back pretty damn quick um, if you have enjoyed watching this video please do leave comments down below let me know what you think of my build and how it's going or how it compares to other stuff that I've done uh, if you have learned anything from this video please let me know about that as well I'd like to learn too don't forget if you have other names for some of the products some of the materials that I've used please leave them down below if you are new to Magrathia Builder World, welcome! I'm pleased you're here. Especially if you come here for a silver bayonet route, then please do make sure that you subscribe, click like, and let me know about stuff down below. And if you think I could be making other stuff for silver bayonet, I'm totally up for that as well, because it's been good fun so far. So, um, if you think that you would like to be in uh, for a shout of winning the next Magrathia um, Builder World's piece of scenery made for somebody out there in viewer land remember you need to be a member of my patreon at magathea build world 
Oh, I screwed that up. Uh, Patreon.com slash Magathea Builder Worlds. Um, and uh, the next competition is going to be uh, launched in a couple of weeks' time. Um, and that will be for the next build. So make sure you have signed up already and then you stand a good chance. Well, a reasonable chance of uh, winning the next one. You've got to do some thinking. You've got to come up with some ideas. You've got to come up with some cool stuff for me to build. That's the way it works. I'll tell you all about that if you enter the competition. Otherwise, uh, like I said, the next video for this is going to be out really soon. So do keep watching. Um, thank you very much for watching uh, Magathea Builder Worlds. Have a very happy Easter. I am going back to me book. Well, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to go and paint a farmhouse. It's over here get some paint on it and do the gardens and stuff and then I'm going back to my book.